Hello there and welcome to our Disney kind of life at the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival 2024. And uh, the festival has been going on for a couple weeks and we have been here a couple times already and have tried some food, but um, we wanted to do something different with what we do. Uh, we're actually gonna give ourselves a budget, a hundred bucks. What can you get for a hundred dollars? Can you get enough desserts, enough food, enough drink? Anything, will pickle milkshake make the cut? Will lobster tail make the cut? Lobster tail's kind of expensive. So we're gonna be working with $100. We're gonna buy a gift card, so I'll be budgeted to the gift card that's gonna be on my wrist. I'm gonna go pick one of those up. But of course, as always, our first step is to make sure you grab one of the passports at the beginning and uh, kind of pick out what you wanna eat on the menu. So come along with us on our Disney kind of life at the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival on a $100 budget. There's 235 food items and drink items at the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. If you were to buy each one of those, it would be $2,100. It's like $2,166 and 34 cents before tax. Um, and I think 89 of those are food and the rest are alcoholic drinks. So there's a lot of options. This book will be your guide. And that's just extra stuff on top of all the other food that Epcot offers. So always pick up this guide. We definitely recommend it to help you plot out what you want to try. All right. so. As promised, we're going to go inside to Gateway Gifts and grab a gift card. And we're going to put $100 on it. That's it. 100 bucks is all we're going to be able to eat and drink today. Hopefully enough to keep us going. So that's it. 100 bucks. Let's get in there. Let's see what $100 gets us. And I am literally armed with the gift card. It has $100. And I kind of found this wall that looks like the pickle milkshake color. So maybe we're going to have to get the pickle milkshake and put it in our budget for 100 bucks. Our first stop is at the Communicore Hall to try the McIntyre's booth. They have four different styles of macaroni and cheese, but we're going to be targeting the truffle macaroni and cheese. Let's get in there. Here we go, the truffle macaroni and cheese. Going to mix it up there. Bon appetit. Oh wow, it's really good. It's also part, I should have mentioned, I've got my book here. We actually got a little stamp for uh, Emile's Fromage Montage. If you get one, two, three, four, five of them, typical of the festivals, you get a free treat at the end of it. I uh, highly recommend the truffle macaroni and cheese. Um, it's got a little hint of the, of the truffle in the, the cheese and super good. I would definitely buy probably just five of these to fill out the booklet if you uh, want to get the, the meals cheat because you can actually buy five of the same items. Anyways, I'm going to go back in for another one. This is really good. Next up on our journey of our $100 budget, we're going to go for a heavy hitter, the lobster tail, roasted warm water, lobster tail from Coastal Eats. The jumbo shrimp is very good. We highly recommend it, but you cannot get both of these with our $100 budget because that would be 26 bucks. Next up, flavors from fire. And I really, really want to try the Steakhouse Blended Burger. This looks and I hope is very good. Just a little slider. Next up, we're going to grab a couple of items from the Brewing Lab at the Odyssey. We are actually here specifically for the unnecessarily spicy yet extremely tasty Carolina Reaper Pepper Curry Wings. It is quite a mouthful. And the pickle milkshake's back. Got to get the pickle milkshake again this year. Let's get in there and dig in. Let's see what we got. So what we did is we brought in some food from different booths into the Odyssey because it is hot outside. Pickle milkshake leads us off. You get a little bumper sticker. How awesome is that when you get the pickle milkshake? it's back for round two pickle milkshake will it be better than last year the same will I like it any better than last year let's dig in all right well it's got the pickle juice taste again it's got the cream taste again it's super hot today so I will call it refreshing today and it's probably gonna really help me against these spicy wings that I just picked up so let's see uh, Let's see how hot those wings are. All right, first up from Coastal Eats is the lobster tail. It's actually a pretty decent size for $13. Really enjoyed this one last year, so I kind of broke off a little piece. I'm gonna dip it in the little butter sauce. I already sprayed it with a little lemon. It's awesome. It's worth the $13, which you know puts our $100 budget in jeopardy because it's a really big hit. But highly recommended, and we still did it anyway because we love it. It's really good. 
so cool to come to Epcot and just get a lobster tail, I think. So fancy. Next up from Flavors and Fire is the Steakhouse Slider. This one smells pretty good. I can't wait to get into it. I kind of like a little pink in my burger, but that's okay. Wouldn't expect a little pink in there from Epcot. Gonna just take a little bite. Experiment with all sorts of ingredients, like the pickle. These are wonders of science. The beef is really good, actually. Can, can taste it. There's also a little sauce on there, probably an aioli, and that is is good. It's not bad for its price. This is. 675 I believe um, not as bad as the lobster 13 the lobster of course better than this but this is actually a pretty solid little tiny burger get your little burger fix on it does have a little uh, watercress in it and some aioli but it is really good I'm excited to uh, finish that one off so I know we're being budget conscious and um, we're not gonna get any sodas or or any Starbucks coffees or bottled water so what we did is we brought in our simmering corksicle uh, champagne flute from last year and we're just filling it with water from the water stations throughout the parks where you would fill up a water bottle if you bring it in so if you want to save money bring in a water bottle fill it up or you can bring in a fancy corksicle uh, champagne flute from the food and wine festival last year or you can buy one this year but they are 24 dollars they don't come with a drink cheers to water so we're gonna try the hottest thing at the festival the unnecessarily spicy yet extremely tasty Carolina Reaper pepper curry wings with creamy cucumber raita. I've actually heard these are hot, so I'm thinking theme park hot. I can usually do hot stuff, but Carolina Reapers are very hot. Let's pick it up. Here we go. I don't know if this will be pretty, but we're doing it. All right, so they are a little spicy, probably a little spicier than you would think for a Disney park, but they are very good and the spice isn't so obnoxious. I'm not tearing up. I'm not reaching for pickle milkshake to wash it down, although I'll take, I'll take a swig. Pickle milkshake pairs very well with this. Um, as far as you trying them, if you're okay with hot stuff, You'll be able to handle this. If you don't like spicy, I would suggest passing because they are spicy, but they are very good. The sauce is good. It does linger though with a little burn. So I survived and I'm gonna dig into some more and finish these bad boys off. So a little bit of a follow-up on the Carolina Reaper wings at Brewing Odyssey. They will leave a lingering burning taste. Um, so I would classify them as spicy if you're not used to spicy food, but if you like spicy food, they're definitely good. And I want to give a special shout out to the Pickle Milkshake for being a really good companion to have with the wings. And um, before I leave, I'm going to show you some of the decor here in the brewing lab. You can see my wonderful shadow here, but you can also read these. Sorry about the lighting. Leave it there for a second. Get my silhouette there. Man, do we wish that the mobile, the Muppet Mobile Lab Baker or mobile lab would come back this thing was cool when it was roaming around epcot and one more shout out for pickle milkshake a great carolina reaper wing companion time to get some dessert in mexico here we're gonna target that one the pan de elote traditional mexican cornbread topped with chocolate sauce and queso fresca and it is only six bucks all right, we're gonna try the panda latte. Got a big gold scoop of cornbread and some chocolate. Let's go. All right, if you like cornbread and chocolate, you're gonna love this. Um, the cornbread itself is nice and moist, and the chocolate sauce is not too sweet, so it's probably more dark chocolate if I had to guess. But um, really good balance there. It's a very good dessert after the unnecessarily hot Carolina Reaper wings. So um, good dessert and short walk over from the Odyssey to Mexico to get it. Next up is Germany. We're gonna get the Schinkendulen. Always a fun one. A pasta gratin ham with onions and cheese. It's a hit for us every time. And if you're gonna come here, we do suggest the apple strudel. Looks like we caught some entertainment.
When we saw the paella negra on the menu, we knew we had to get it. This has squid ink rice, the shrimp. Squid ink, of course, makes things appear black. So it should be an interesting uh, video. Hopefully it doesn't get stuck in my teeth. Let's get in there and try it. All right, from Germany, the Schenkendurlin. It's kind of like, I guess, macaroni and cheese. It's got noodles, cheese, ham in it, and onions. So bite into it. So the cheese is salty, which is good, it's cheese, and a little hardened around the noodles. And um, I don't really taste the ham much. Um, I do taste the onion. Overall, it's solid. You know, not the best thing we've had today for sure, but I would say it's good. Um, especially if you like potatoes, noodles, onions, cheese. It's really cheese forward. I taste more cheese than anything on this one, but overall good. All right, time to dig into the paella negra. This is the squid ink rice right, with shrimp, bay scallops, and octopus. I tried to get a little bit of everything on here and even the like a garlic aioli that it comes with. So let's do this. I'm excited for this one. Um, it smells good. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it. So I should have cut the shrimp in half so I could tell you what it tastes like. But um, it is good. It tastes like garlic shrimp. The octopus is, is chewy. I don't really taste it. It just kind of tastes like seafood. I think I taste the garlic aioli more than anything. And I really didn't put that much garlic aioli on it. But I'm going to try one of these scallops again because I don't really taste them. So I think my mistake was actually mixing them all together. I say eat them separate if you get this because the scallops are very good. Octopus doesn't have much of a flavor and of course the garlic shrimp is really good because it's garlic shrimp. And um, the rice, you know, just tastes like rice except it's black. I don't know if you can see it here. But um, overall, we recommend this dish because it's only eight bucks. It's really not that expensive. So I give this one a good thumbs up. It's a nice, nice different dish than what we've had a years past here. So we like it. Actually just doing a quick stop in Belgium to try the Belgian chilled coffee, non-alcoholic. Just a quick $5 pick-me-up. We need it, we're halfway through this. And oh, over in Brazil, we're getting one of our favorite items, the Pau de Queijo, Brazilian cheese bread. You can also get this at Skipper Cantina Magic Kingdom, but we do like getting it during the festival. And we have the chilled Belgian coffee, non-alcoholic. Let's see if Ratui wants it. Romeo, Emil? Nope. I'll take some. That's a really good pick-me-up in Belgium. Probably would pair really well with the Belgian waffle. Because we're on a budget that we could only afford the coffee at $5 without the alcohol. So it is very tasty. Super good. Next up, we got the Pau de Quejo, the Brazilian cheese bread. So we're gonna take a quick bite of this one. It's always one of our favorites. Also only $5, so it's a pretty good budget item. Oh yeah, as always, love the Brazilian cheese bread. Definitely a must do for us on the Food and Wine Festival. All right, we're doing a quick check on our $100 budget. We are anticipating about four more items. We have 3125 left and we've had quite a culinary journey so far uh, can i recap them all from memory let's try it we started at the macetizers we got the truffle macaroni and cheese headed over to coastal eats and got the lobster tail which is just phenomenal and then we moved over to flavors from fire and got the smokehouse blend slider then into the brewing odyssey building the lab experiment where we got the obnoxiously long name Carolina Reaper Wings. I can't remember the name. And the famous pickle milkshake. From there, we went to Mexico and we got the cornbread with the cheese sauce on it, which is very good, highly recommended. A little salty chocolate, but that's okay. Then we made our way over to Spain where we got the squid ink rice and kind of a seafood like smorgasbord. It's got shrimp in it, scallops. Also has octopus. That one heavily recommended, a little pricey at $8. Um, if you're doing a budget, if not, I say go for it. When in Rome, or in that case, Spain. In Germany, we got the Shen Shenundo. I probably said it wrong, but that is pretty much 
kind of like a dry macaroni and cheese with onions and ham in it. Then we wandered over to Belgium to get a chilled Belgium coffee, which is awesome. We're still enjoying it. Since remember, we're just drinking water for free. We're poor, we can't afford Starbucks, can't afford uh, soda today. So we're trying to stay on budget. Then we went next door to Brazil and got the cheese bread, which we always recommend. So that is our recap. We've spent about $69.75. So we got $31.25 left. Let's go over and finish this thing off and see how close we get to 100. Hopefully we don't go over. One of our final main courses of the evening is going to be the autumn chili from the forest and field booth, which is over by the old Starbucks location or also um, the frozen ice cream area. All right, I got the autumn chili. It smells super good and I got a good mix of everything on here. The only thing now here is the cornbread, which I assume is good, but take a bite. The autumn chili, which is bison, lamb, pork belly, root vegetables, jalapeno cornbread, smoked cheddar, and cream free ashe. Look at all this. This is a big dish. Um, I believe the price was about eight bucks. Definitely worth it. It's really good. Yeah. I can taste the seasoning in there. I can't quite place where the seasoning is, but it's good. The sauce is very good. It's got a good texture to it. Just stole a little cornbread. Cornbread is good. Jalapeno cornbread, so that's good. This might be the best thing we had tonight, honestly. Thinking back of all the stuff we had. I do like the consistency, the texture, and it really tastes good. Highly recommend it. It was $7.75. I double-checked the price. And here we are at the Milden Mold booth where we are looking for the freshly baked carrot cake. But they got some really good ones here. You got the fig cheesecake, the pear and almond, and of course alcoholic drinks. But we are here for this guy, the carrot cake. So here's the freshly baked carrot cake. I'm actually gonna kinda dig into it so you can just kinda see it. So there you go. There's the inside of the freshly baked carrot cake from the new stand, milled, milled in mold, mold and milled, milled and mold. One of those two, anyways. Can't wait to taste this one. It's a repeat, used to be at the American Pavilion, but that got relocated here in favor of hot dogs, so. It does not disappoint. In case you're wondering, I think our budget's at about 18.25 now, so we're gonna kinda have to figure out what we're gonna get to try to stay under 100 for the day. Stay tuned to see what, what that becomes. One of our final items, we're getting down to the end of Earth Eats. We're gonna try the lemon poppy seed cake. Well, lemon icing. From Earth Eats, we took the lemon poppy seed muffin actually over to the McIntyre area in the Communa Corps to eat it. But uh, this one looks really presentable. Can't wait to dig into it. We love lemon poppy seed cake in general, so can't wait to try it. It looks good. It smells lemony, let's try it. I can tell you somebody loves lemon poppy seed muffins from Dutch Brothers. This tastes just like that, so it's super good. And I don't know if it came out in the other video, but it's got a cute little flower on top. I'm sure it's an edible flower, but I probably won't eat it. But uh, lemon poppy seed cake, very good if you like lemon. So it's over between the pigment and the land pavilion. Very good. And for our final stop, we'll be at Hawaii. We're not actually getting any food here though. We're just getting a celebratory drink. We are going for the Alani sunrise. Although it's dark now, maybe we'll call it a sunset. Hopefully we stay under 100 with this purchase. We have 14.25 left. Wish us luck. And we did it. We got the final item, the Alani Sunrise. And this brought us to $99.75. We did it. Cheers. We came in under hundred bucks and we ate a lot of items today. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, kind of interesting take on our day here at the Food and Wine Festival, but cheers. This one's very good. You got a lot of pineapple juice in it and vodka. So obviously vodka is pretty subtle, especially when mixed with pineapple and a grenadine. I recommend this as a, as a good cap off drink to finish off your day at Epcot or night. Uh, $14 as, as always the alcoholic drinks during the Food and Wine Festival are a little pricey, but I would recommend this one because we love pineapple. That concludes our Disney kind of life at the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. 
where we ate 14 items for $99.75. We did it. We beat the $100 mark we set for ourselves with a budget, and we finished it off with a nice Alani sunrise. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, different take of our presentation of the Food and Wine Festival. Instead of just bringing you around the countries, we wanted to uh, kind of show you how you could budget and eat a lot of items at, at Epcot on a budget. So. If you like this video and you want to be notified of future content, subscribe to our channel, hit the little notify button as the Alani Sunrise is reminding you to do, and you'll be notified of future content. And if you want to watch other stuff like this, watch the video that we put up over here. It's a good one, I promise. Till next time, this is Disney Kind of Life. See ya!